In this video I'm going to be doing more work to the spider. I've already done the front wing and sills. The next thing to do is the inner arch. I've got a nice new arch to fit. So how am I going to tackle this? Well, I've seen a lot of people remove the outer wing and this outer wing has to be removed as well. I do have to remove that, but if I do that, then I've lost my position. The back wing is in the right place, so it needs to be there for me to set this in the right place. I need to know its position forward and back. Uh, it can be tilted and also in and out. I can only know where this position is with the wing on. I can understand why some people want to remove the outer wing because access would be so much easier. But you are gambling to its position. I've taken off the under seal and like the other side this inner arch has been replaced before. It's not in actually that bad a condition apart from the lower sections. The trouble is this moulding isn't in good condition and that needs to be replaced as well. It's also, like the other side, this is welded from the back side with the wing off and it's seam welded so that's going to be a pain in the butt. The outer arch isn't as good as the other side, we've got a small hole there. So I'm going to replace this whole lip and there's plenty of spot welds to, to be removed. But because I'm not having to save this lip, there is a quicker way I can remove these spot welds and keep the reference point the lip as a uh, as a guide. Removing the inner arch with the plasma cutter was very fast, but I got to get rid of this moulding next. There we go, it's removed. It's pretty good up to about here. Get the hole to replace there and there. And of course, down that side. Removing that moulding was an absolute delight. Don't mean to sound sarcastic. Just gonna take a break from the alpha for a minute because I would like to just talk about some advice I might have for anybody starting out restoring a car perhaps they haven't done it before and they're they're starting out they just bought a car and one thing that I've seen people do in the past is they take all the panels off so they they see all the rusty panels they take them all off and what happens then is you have remove the structural integrity of the car and I can see the point in wanting to to do that because you want to see everything that there is to see expose all the bad areas and you think that's a good place to start but once you've removed that structural integrity then it's very difficult to find um, where everything lines up again I had a, a Riley Elf I did years ago and the chap removed the front wings, um, he moved the inner wings, the front panel, he moved the entire, the entire floor. The whole thing was gone and it was just flopping around and he obviously got to the point where he's removed everything and then decided that it was too much for him. So that's where I got given the job and I had to put it right. But what took a lot of time was 
lining everything back up. It really was an absolute mission. And that is one of the worst things you can do on a vehicle is to remove everything, remove the integrity of the car. And uh, you're really starting on, well, you're almost going backwards by doing that. Luckily, the, the chap didn't start welding in any new panels at all. So he took everything off, off and just left it. Um, but that is the next worst thing you can do is to start welding in panels into a buckled car. So if you, you haven't braced it, you haven't uh, done anything to make sure anything lines up, but you start welding in new stuff, then wow, you've got a real, real problem then. So my advice is to take as little off as possible re when restoring these cars. You want to leave as much of the strength in the body as you possibly can, particularly with a convertible. Um, anything on a convertible um, you want to brace. Um, I did some work on um, a uh, Morris Minor Cabriolet and that is, is just awful in terms of strength. You can, you can lift it up just slightly in one place with a jack and the door won't shut anymore. Or we'll go over a speed bump and the doors are open. Um, it's just so, so weak. So you really have to brace any convertible um, and some are definitely worse than others. The next thing I would advise not to do is to remove all the paint. Uh, I know it looks pretty when it's all in bare metal, but unless you've got a sort of dehumidified, really dry garage or live in a country where there's really not much damp, um, then you're going to have rust forming pretty quick. And if you've removed the whole vehicle of paint, um, that rust problem is going to be a major problem. Uh, this also happened to me when I, um, a customer sandblasted the vehicle. Um, I didn't realise he was going to do that, but he did. And it was pretty early in my career and I really didn't know what to, what to do about that. Um, what I should have done probably was paint the whole car, or well, as a van actually, and um, X-Prime it, top coat it, and um, then it would have been okay. But it was left for years in a damp garage and... Uh, the rust that formed on that was such a pain to get rid of. I had to use um, a chemical um, to get rid of it. Um, what should have happened really is it should have been chemically dipped. Um, it stayed in this damp garage for three or four years and um, the surface rust got pretty bad. Um, but obviously to chemically dip vehicles, especially a van, you know, it's going to be 1500, two grand, something like that. It's, a, you know, quite a lot of money. So, you know, if the paint had been left on the vehicle, there wouldn't have been a problem and I always do all the welding repairs and then afterwards I would sandblast and then the vehicle was in the, the workshop for the least amount of time before it gets painted and uh, that's, that's really important. I've started to replace bits on the inner arch but I've got to this strange moulding bit here. Um, it looks like this is intended to um, aid the transport around the factory. It serves no other purpose and on the other side it was rusted away completely so I just put in a new bit. Um, I don't really see the point in trying to keep it as it, uh, it really doesn't do anything. So I think I'm just going to cut it out and put in a new bit. I think that, that would be better for the car. Next bit to do is this section here. It's in pretty good condition apart from all the rust. It's got this uh, doodle in it and that's the first bit I'm going to recreate. I'm going to cut off a section about that long. It's going to be oversized and that's the first thing I'm going to put in. And then I'll take uh, scribe lines to mark out the shape afterwards. I've cut out this strengthening swage doodle so I can now scribe around the edge and trace the shape I want. What I've got here is two wheels offset to one another. The only tricky bit is going to be these really tight bends. I'm not sure how well it's going to do that but we'll see.
what happens when swaging is where these bends are the material has been kind of uh, pushed together and that means that there's too much material along here so this needs to be shrunk around that needs to be shrunk that needs to be shrunk um, it, it pulls the whole bit of material into the center so it becomes slightly smaller which is why it's important to put this stuff in before you cut around the edges because it will pull in the only way to avoid this from pulling the material in is to pre-stretch it you can do that with uh, uh, some rolls or you can hammer it now I can mark around the edges I'm gonna have to guess a little bit down here because obviously there's nothing there next thing to do is remake this molding like I did in part three once that's in then the inner arch can go in and the last thing to do once that's in is repair this section here the reason I want to leave this bit till last is because the molding finishes there and the arch comes out will be about here somewhere with a folded lip so I want the folded lip to join this section I don't know where that is until the moldings on and the arch is in this is the molding shape I've got to make up and that is the dimensions for it that 10 mil gets cut off to 5 mil after it's been made <clears throat> but there's a sequence to the folding of it so I've numbered them one two three and four and you have to do it in that sequence with the uh, in the fly press tool in because of clearances <laughs> 